Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Priyanka Singh, a junior resident uh, in Tirthankar Mahavir Medical College and Research Center. Uh, my topic for paper presentation is role of MRI in non-traumatic shoulder pain. The aim of this study is to demonstrate the role of MRI in detecting shoulder pathologies and countering patient of shoulder pain without the history of trauma. This study is conducted in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, and this was an observational study of all the patients with the shoulder pain without the history of trauma. Coming to the uh, radio, uh, radio Diagnosis Department for MRI shoulder was uh, were included in the study population, and it was performed using 1.5 Tesla Siemens uh, uh, system using a standard protocol. Introduction, non-acute shoulder pain is a common medical condition, particularly in middle-aged and older, ed, uh, older adults. Shoulder pain makes up to 15% of all the musculoskeletal complaints. Non-acute or chronic shoulder pain is defined as a pain, lasting at least six months, often without a definite, uh, definite inciting traumatic event. The, there are many causes of non-acute shoulder pain, and these are listed in order from most to least common, include the rotator cuff impingement, tendinosis, tears, adhesive capsulitis, subacromial sub, and subdeltoid bursitis, Specific tendinosis, glenohumeral and acroclavicular osteoarthritis, spice of tendinosis, steel, dislocation, internal impingement, rheumatological disorder, tumor, stress fracture, and the cervical spine disease. MRI has a significant advantage of providing good multiplanar delineation even without the contrast and absence of radiation hazard. And detailed information can be obtained regarding the cuff defects, addition structure, muscle atrophy, and mechanical state, uh, status of the rotator cuff. The inclusion criteria is the chronic causes of the shoulder pain and the patient of all age, age group, uh, irrespective of the gender were included in the study. And exclusion criteria were the patient with the history of trauma in the past, patient having contraindication for MRI like metallic implants, pacemaker, claustroph claustrophobic for the contraindication. And results and discussion. Uh, the distribution of male versus female gender. This pie chart demonstrates uh, uh, the distribution of male uh, versus female gender. This uh, my study shows that sixty seven percent of male are affected and thirty three percent of females were affected. This is age distribution. Uh, this age distribution pie chart. It shows that the most of the patients were in the age group thirty one to forty years, and then. Uh, and then 24% were the age group 41 to 50 years, and 8% were in the age group, uh, age group 51 to 60 years, and uh, 21, to uh, 21 to 30 years, and 12% uh, were in the age group uh, 61 to 70 years. The common pathologies associated with the chronic uh, shoulder pain, uh, the most common were rotator, uh, rotator cuff tear, adhesive capsulitis, and then adhesive capsulitis, and then uh, uh, acromial joint arthritis, tendinosis, infective etiology, inflammatory arthritis, and bursitis. Out of 24 patients, five patients were having rotator cuff tear and five patients with adhesive capsulitis, three patients with AC joint arthritis and tendinosis, uh, and uh, infective uh, tubercular etiologies, respectively, and uh, three, uh, one patient with inflammatory arthritis and one patient with bursitis. The age distribution in my study was in the range of 22 years to 65 years, with the maximum population within 30 to 50 years in range. The majority of the case in, cases in the study were male, and the most commonly involved side was, was right shoulder. So out of 24 cases, the majority of cases uh, were uh, uh, include a rotator cuff injury, and adhesive capsulitis, acro acromioclavicular arthritis, tendinosis, tubercular etiology, tumor, and lastly, one case of each inflammatory arthritis and bursitis. Now, the rotator cuff tear are the most common non-traumatic ca causes. Uh, trauma, we mostly when we aggravate the prior inflammatory and degenerative tendon alteration. Supraspinal was the most commonly involved, followed by the subscapularis, infraspinatus, TV spinal, and decreasing motor. Among these, a uh, partial tear of rotator cuff were the most common tendon abnormality, where the partial tear of supraspinatus tendon were the most common. Out of five patients uh, of rotator cuff pathologies in my study, uh, supraspinatus tear with the partial tear seen in three patients and complete tear seen in the one patient. And, and infraspinatus tear was seen in one patient. So the rotator cuff or tendinosis or tendinopathy it is characterized by thickening without discontinuity of tendon fibers in presence of increased signal, in signal within the tendon with involvement of supraspinatus tendon in, uh, followed by subscapular tendinosis and infraspinatus tendinosis. Adhesive capsulitis is a clinical syndrome of pain and severely decreased motion, known as frozen shoulder, caused by the thickening and contraction of joint capsule and synovium. Most common finding in the study were abnormal soft tissue thickening within the rotator interval with signal alteration. 
Adhesive capsulitis was seen in the patient of middle age group uh, between 30 to 45 years. So the MRI of tubercular etiology, which is characterized by destructive erosion synovial hypertrophy presence of fluid reservoir as well as extensive destruction of muscle, a stabilizing tendon, capsule of the shoulder joint with the humoral uh, bone, bone marrow infiltration, enhancement of the uh, hypertrophic synovium and edge enhancement of fluid reservoir were observed after intravenous contrast administration. So these were the uh, these were the cases from my study. These is the, uh, these are the cases of rotator cuff tear. In this uh, in this PD weighted and D2 weighted image showing uh, hyper intensities are noted within this uh, within the infraspinatus uh, supraspinatus tendons, seen with increased bulk in the tendon near uh, near its insertion, along with extensive peri uh, tendinous fluid and secondary degenerative changes appearing hyper. Um, which is appearing hyper hyper intense on both T2 and uh, PD images. So these uh, T2 weighted image uh, uh, also uh, uh, showing the infraspinatus tendon along with peritendinous edema, uh, proximal to insertion, and uh, this uh, this uh, T1 weighted image uh, showing uh, hyper intensities. Uh, Hyper, this PD weighted image showing hyper intensities along the subscapular tendon at ins insertion of the humeral head and slightly uh, proximal to it, uh, suggestive of the tendinosis. And also, uh, the hyper intensities are noted uh, involving the tendon of supraspinatus along its posterior aspects at its sites of insertion and adjacent to its, uh, along with along with extensing extending posteriorly towards the tendon of infraspinatus suggesting of tendinosis. And this uh, T1 hypo uh, T1 hypointensity is noted along the long head of biceps tendon in bicepital groove and is inferior to likely reactive uh, likely reactive fluid. And this uh, T1 weighted uh, and this uh, T1 weighted image uh, fat set image showing a thickened joint capsule. Uh, with synovial hypertrophy, enhancing uh, areas of marrow edema and enhancing area of erosion, and few subchondral cysts are also seen. And in this uh, T2 weighted, uh, in this uh, PD weighted image uh, showing uh, hydrogenously uh, hyper intense collection is noted along the medial aspect of the head of humerus, which is secondary along with the secondary destructive changes, multiple cortical erosion and cortical irregularities with extension and collection in the left glenoid cavity, completely involving the left shoulder joint space with extension into the su uh, super, uh, superior subscapular recess. And uh, few bony fragments are seen inferior to the humoral head, a suggestion of infective etiology. Which is uh, tubercular in nature. This is a case of uh, infective etiology, tuber like tuberculosis. This is a case of inflammatory arthritis. These are my references. Thank you.